Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from Mark, Mark Pearson, K3PPP. Pop, 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 pop. Okay, he says, first, thanks for the videos. I've taken my tech, general, and extra now and passed them all starting in October. And I'm glad you staggered those out a little bit. It makes them a little more meaningful. My question is concerning the MFJ 2010 antenna video. Now, I have a reference station, which you can find at decastler.com slash reference. And if you go there, you'll get a complete bill of materials for all the things you need to build a... Uh, a beginner's or newcomer's general class station. Uh, I tried to pick pieces that you'll be satisfied with for a very long time. And then I turned my own station into the reference station. So uh, as you can see uh, in the video behind you, this uh, black radio over here is the one I had before, which is an FTDX 3000, which I don't regard as a beginner's radio. Uh, but I've got the ICOM 7300 here, which I do. Now, the reference antenna right now is the MFJ2010. The MFJ2010, FJ2010, is a dipole that's 66 feet long, and at the one-third point, it is fed here, there's two ballons in there. There's a, um, a coax ballon to uh, change from, um, and it is truly a ballon, to change from unbalanced coax to balanced up above. And then there, there is, I guess, what you would call a bal bal. Um, it's a bal balanced to balanced, and it converts from 50 ohms to 400 ohms. So. It's a four to one ballon that sits right here. Now the center point of this, if you were to feed it at the center point, would be on the order of 30 to 70 ohms, depending on the height, depending on the height of the antenna, okay? If you feed it over here at the one third point, the uh, impedance is gonna be on the order of 400 ohms. If you go all the way out here and feed it at the end, you're looking at about 2,500 ohms. Uh, now remember that impedance is the ratio of the voltage to the current. Okay, with phase angles, real parts, uh, imaginary parts, etc., etc., etc. It could be inductive, it could be capacitive, it could be resistive. All those things come to play when you're dealing with an antenna. Now the MFJ2010 covers all of 40, all of 20. That's all I really care about, but it also covers part of uh, 10 and part of 6. These are your real workhorse bands as a new general. By new, I mean less than 10 years, okay? You can always wander off into other things where you will want another antenna. But for a good, foolproof first antenna, the MFJ2010, which is, what, 70 bucks, it's pretty cheap. It's a lot less expensive than buying a multiband vertical. Now, it does have the disadvantage of being 66 feet long. There are other things you can do with it, but that's another video, okay? So here is the ballon, and let's take a look again at his question. His question is this. If you have to trim the antenna, let's suppose the antenna on 40 meters works at um, 609, or 6990 is your resonance point. The antenna is too long. Now, it's very important to remember that this is at the one third point. Other off center fed dipole, there you go, that's the right acronym. Off center fed dipoles will feed at different points for different results. But this is one third, two thirds. 
So if you decide you need to take six inches out of the antenna, what do you do? Well, you take two inches off here and four inches off here. You do it proportionally, okay? Otherwise, you get into weird patterns where this is no longer at the one-third point and it starts to behave badly. Now, I have shown a method, I did a video on this, where if you take, if you've got the end and it's wrapped like this to a, a insulator, and this comes through a hole in the insulator, and you want to shorten this, there are a couple different ways of doing it. Now, on the off-center fed dipole, there's a little clamp and screw that you can change, but I dread losing that nut in the dirt. It'll be gone forever. So what I do is I pull this cord here so that it comes back up through here and then back down to here. And then you take the part that's through there, bring it back and just wrap it around here, okay? That way, if you take too much off, you can unwrap it and do it again. So, I should patent that, I guess. Um, so, you stated trim both ends to compensate for being only 20 feet in height. True, I did. Uh, I understand it needs to be proportional. True. Okay, if four inches from the long end means two inches from the short. True. But other than trial and error, how did you calculate where to start? Um, well, you can use the formula. 468 over F in megahertz. This is feet. Equals one half wavelength of wire. Now this takes into account the velocity factor, which is 0 0.95 for wire. It's different for different materials or tubes or stuff like that. Okay, and you can work this backwards. You know that you have 66 feet, 66 feet, um, and if for some reason it's resonant at six. 995 and you want it at f at um, 7150 to be right in the middle of the uh, 40 meter band you can put these numbers back into here and find the difference in length one says length l and the other says l minus three inches okay and there, you determine right there, that's how much you need to shorten the dipole. And this is why I recommend a non-destructive approach, because you may end up changing it a bit. If you move the antenna at some future date, it could be higher, lower, over different ground, use a different cable, different length, something like that, you may want to readjust that antenna, okay? Um, other things do affect antenna SWR, snow, water, rain, um, things like that can temporarily affect the SWR. Parking somebody's car under your antenna can affect the SWR. Um, remember, rule number one of antennas, everything affects everything. So anyhow, this is the way you use it and you, you solve backwards. If 6995 gives you 66 feet, then put in 7150, it'll give you a somewhat shorter length, and the difference between those two lengths is the amount you need to adjust the antenna. So there you have it, and I hope that's helpful. If any of you would like to help support this channel, you may do so by going to dcastler.com support, picking either one of the two PayPal methods or uh, Patreon. And they both work fine. Thank you very much. I try to make notice of that. And if I get a question from a Patreon, I will admit I give it more attention quicker. And um, 
If you would like to ask a question for the Ask Dave column in QST that I write every month, send that question to askdave, all one word, at A-R-R-L dot O-R-G, not dot net, but O-R-G, and that will be sent directly to me. So until we next meet, 73.